I was very shy when I was in my early 20s and very self-loathing about my um, appearance, about my body. And one of the first times that I ever took pictures with anyone was with Annie Sprinkle in the early 80s. She asked me if I would come and do some nudie cutie pictures. It was <laughs> a revelation and she took beautiful pictures. And I've tried to learn over the years how to, to tend to myself gently rather than punishingly. I'm really hot. I'm very hot all the time because I'm in menopause, oh, which is really fantastic. <laughs> With the Future Feminist show that we're doing, um, I've, I got to curate like 13 nights of performance. One of the things that we'd like to, to alter and eradicate is misogyny, is did the devaluation of women, uh, treating women like second-class citizens. Uh, the corporations and, and men make decisions that aren't in the best interest of people, just in the interest of serving the economy. There's a huge uh, a majority of women that want to participate more than just being consumers, certainly. I don't really ever buy clothes. <laughs> Most of my friends and I, we exchange or make our clothes. The body dysmorphia and the self-hatred, self-loathing. I mean, I, I was, I'm from Malibu, California, and if I look back and think of myself as a young girl and how, how sad that is, or how sad that was, that I hated my physical self so much, as, as such, at such a young age because of the comments made to me like if you would only lose five more pounds and dye your hair blonde we could get you into television. I come from a surfer family so you know you know bikini beach and blonde hair and I was always interested in the dark ladies that film like Barbara Steele or um, uh, Carol Borland, Mark of the Vampire. Film noir was my vision of beauty growing up in Los Angeles. I saw Los Angeles in black and white, <laughs> even though I was on the beach. My parents, who've been really supportive of my art all these years, conversely, um, back in the early days, they were still trying to push me into their way of thinking. I got cast for Calvin Klein in the 90s, so the corporations thought I was cute for a minute and I got put on the buses. It, it took that for straighter people or my family uh, to say like, oh, I could see that my, you're okay. You know, I needed, I got a, 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 I had to have validation from a kind of more conservative fashion group. I was a tomboy and I was always topless on the beach and I was surfed. And I hated um, puberty because I wanted to like always go topless, and so I felt like my breasts just like hurt when they started to come out, you know. And I wanted to suppress any transformation in my body. I wanted to be androgynous, and also with molesty, you know, lurking type of types of people too. People predatorizing me as a, as a little girl. I mostly only dressed like a boy. All through high school, I, ha I shaved my head, I wore suits. If I think about it with my, my mother, who's so loving, and we talk about this still, like, I, I, I say to her, like, Mom, don't you remember when you used to always make comments about my weight? And don't you, you remember that you were always telling me I had to lose mm -hmm. 10 pounds? Mm -hmm. For my mother as well, I feel like in the last couple of decades, she grew with me. We grew together. Her consciousness is higher as well around food, around body type. I had such a problem with food. Like I have had such a terrible relationship with food for such a long time. Um, no patience for food, fast food only. <laughs> Growing up in Los Angeles, I think I, I know like more about Arby's and McDonald's and Taco Bell than any normal person should. I'm a, a recovering addict, you know? I, I got into drugs in the early 80s, which was a fantastic, for me, substitute for food. I was on heroin and alcohol in the early 80s, and I was able to stop around 87, around the time that I lost uh, most of my friends to AIDS. That was a big wake-up call. It was like, wow, wait a minute. 
all of my best friends have to die and I'm sitting here using at age 53 you know I do finally feel like I have a better relationship with food and actually really you know food is there's so much beauty in, in getting to know about food I have a um this is my menopausal body <laughs> I take one just one one thing am I screwing up the, the flow why are you making excuses for your, why do you say that's your menopausal body? Because I'm proud of it. What, what, is your, what does that mean, your menopausal body? I think menopause has just got like such a bad reputation and it's been fantastic for me. I'm relieved that my libido has subsided so that I can concentrate on other things rather than chasing down sex. I don't look down all the time at myself. Like I'm not so pos obsessed with like, how am I doing? How I'm looking? It's just all, I feel like I'm in a different state of acceptance. More that I don't give a fuck more than ever now. I just think it has a bad reputation and I remember seeing women that were older when I was in my 30s, like they'd walk into the room and they'd go, oh my god, it's so hot in here. Oh my god, it's hot, it's hot. And I actually remember thinking uh, mean-spirited things to about them, like ugh. And also just the word is not a cute word in a way. It's got men in it and paws. A lot of women my age are getting their face injected with all this crap and people, I'm just like, what in the fuck are you doing? I don't even recognize women my age with the blowing up and everything. And I think the best way to not worry about aging is don't fucking look in the mirror so scrutinously. It doesn't matter that much. Don't eat, why bother, you know what I mean? So I don't scrutinize myself and that took a lot of practice. At a certain point I hated the way my body developed and I hated the way I felt. And it took a lot of really, really deprogramming and erase all these creepy subliminal message that were constantly thrown at me as a young child, as a young woman, as a young female artist, as a 25 year old woman, as a 35 year old woman. When do you feel the most beautiful? Right now. <laughs> what, do you, what do you love the most about your body? I can do headstands for almost 15 minutes if I want. I can balance. I like that I can balance. Mm -hmm. Women should be treated, no matter what size they are, as if they could grow up to be the president. Even if you're four foot 11, 98 pounds, you still are powerful. You still are intelligent because I do think size does matter with girls too and you're diminished the smaller you get. You're more invisible the smaller you are. I remember I was so much more stressed out when I was younger. I had times, dark times, that wouldn't lift and I, I feel like now I wouldn't indulge that because there's just no time to waste. It's uh, time to turn the lights on again and it's going to be awkward. I, I don't exactly have the formula for it, but I'm willing to, in the 60s, they, they were willing to sacrifice everything they had for freedom, and um, we have to go as hard. That was perfect. Thank okay. you so much. That was absolutely amazing. Annie, Annie, Annie. Um, okay, Annie Sprinkle. Yeah. She's come up before. Lisa She's Cooper. Lisa Cooper. Yeah. Lisa, yes. Yeah. Lisa Cooper told us all about her. Yeah. Um. <laughs>